This is a Dr. Hauschka quick 101 on the Dr. Hauschka makeup. Number one, to have great tools, if you're going to do a wonderful makeup, you do need to have good brushes. The Dr. Hauschka makeup brushes are completely sustainable. They're made out of a birch wood, and birch is a very abundant, um, fast growing tree. It is a lovely um, hardwood that lasts for a very long time. And the bristles are completely synthetic. We don't use any animal hair. The synthetic brushes um, are completely uh, recyclable, by the way. They last for a very, very long time and they don't absorb the makeup too much into the brushes because of them being synthetic. So we have a foundation brush, which is a lovely slanted head like that, um, which really gives you a lovely, even application of foundation. After you've done um, foundation, you're going to be using the big powder brush, which is an awesome big brush. You can get into little areas here like the eyes and obviously always follow the hair growth um, on, the, on the direction when you're applying um, powder. Then we've got a, a rouge brush, which has also got a little slant here and a little tip so you can do highlighting on the tip and then when you're doing on the cheeks you can have more of a sort of sweeping movement. Then we've got brushes for the eyes um, and a way for the concealer for around the eye area here, concealer brush. And then we've got brushes for the eyes, nice big flat brushes. Um, when I talk about eyeshadow, I'll tell you how to apply. Um, and then we've got brow brushes and then um, definer for smaller areas. And then we've got a lip brush. So your tools are important. And invest in a good brush, in, in good makeup brushes. You don't want something that's cheap and nasty and not going to last for longer than one year. Okay, so now we're going to be talking about um, foundations because obviously this is where we start. At the moment we've got seven tones. Um, you can come and have a look at the, the different colors. They're numbered on the top, one to number seven. Um, and you can also see some have got pink undertones and some have got yellow undertones and some are neutral colors. Um, when you're trying a foundation, really important to try the foundation on your jawline. So this should be where you test whether a color is right or not. So you literally want to put, you don't uh, test foundations on the in, inside. This is a very different color to what your face color is. Do I look a bit funny with a stripe now? Um, so the foundation you want to test on your jawline, wait for about 30 seconds so that it adjusts from a pH perspective and then see if it's almost going to disappear because you want a foundation to look be as close to your own natural skin color as possible and to blend in with your decollete and your face. You don't want to have your face as a different color compared to your decollete. Really important to hold a mirror far away, have a look from the side here where it's actually going to be blending in. After you've done foundation, then we'll do concealers. Um, our concealers have got a nice little uh, applicator where you twist and then the very it's thicker in formulation compared to the foundation. Um, you can use a brush or you can use your fingers and then you pat it around the areas wherever you've got dark circles or pigmentation marks. Remember, you only have dark circles here, not here. So don't put the thicker formulation on the outside, but you do use the thicker application on the inside here and just you do it and just pat it with your finger afterwards. Um, we have got a highlighter, the light reflector, which has got a slightly thinner applicator head um, and the color is this really transparent um, color which refracts the light. So if you want to use it on very dark circles here or upper lip here to make your upper lip look, look, look a little bit more pouty um, or where you want to bring out areas. So you want lighter color with the highlighter brings that part of the face forward. Um, so if you can use it as a, like an optical illusion of bringing something forward. If you've got an area of your nose that's a little bit thick that maybe you want to make it look thinner, just put a little stripe on the thicker part so that it looks thinner on that little ridge. So we've got three concealers and then one 
uh, light reflecting concealer, which is the optical illusion. So after you've done foundation and concealer, then we're going to do powders. You can either use a, a loose powder or you can use a compact powder. It's a personal preference. The loose powder is going to give you a, a lighter coverage, obviously. And the compact powder is going to give you um, a, a, a thicker coverage. You can use a nice fat brush like this. The one of my favorite is the color correcting powder, which you obviously want to mix all those colors together. All the different colors of the color correcting powder are going to color correct where you've got the imbalances in your skin. Um, so obviously the green is going to cover up um, pink in your skin um, and the pink is going to uh, help to give the optical illusion for, on the yellow parts of the skin to correct. This is absolutely beautiful for all skin tones and skin conditions. And then your application for, for powder is on the forehead, down the T panel, always going down. And on a chin, you don't want to have a shiny chin. The other powders are um, the bronzing powder, which you can, when you do bronzing powder, the general rule is the three, the number three on the, on the areas. Uh, and then the compact powders, one, two, and three, at the moment, we the chestnut in the middle is a neutral color, so that is for all skin, skin conditions. After we've done powder, um, so the, the general rule with, 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 with doing makeup is the following routine. So we're going to start with foundations, then we're going to go to eyes, and finish with cheeks, and finish with, at the very end, with, with lips. If you want to do it the other way and have rouge first and then go to the eyes, it's, it's also no problem. Okay, so just to give you a brief overview, these are your eyeliners. They're a beautiful soft uh, pencil which has got the color over there. And then that's where the eyeliner, lovely soft color. It's a really beautiful blue. And on the other side is a blender brush. So if you wanted to blend with the little spongy, obviously you don't want to use this one on you in your store for the spongy brush for, to use if a customer is in your store trying something. That's for personal use. Um, and always have a sharpener handy. The Dr. Hauschka eye pencils and lip pencils come with a sharpener. And then it's got a little stick that helps to clean out any stuff that's got stuck in there. Um, very good. Uh, you want to make sure that you've got a really great sharpener for all your pencils. So all the colors are on the top here. We've got blues, greens, you've got black, and you've got sort of a charcoal and then a brown. And they can be used on eyebrows as well as eyes. But, uh, one thing we've got here with the eyeliner is a um, the zero zero, which is one of my favorites. Um, and it is called the eye definer. You can see it's a lovely light flesh, flesh color there that you use on the inside of the eye here, yeah, on the inside, um, it really makes your eyes pop. Um, and you can also use it slightly around the eye to highlight certain areas. But this is a very popular zero zero to really make your eyes pop. <clears throat> and they use it a lot in professional makeup too really make the eyes stand out. So it's part of your eye colors. We've got two liquid liners. We've got brown, um, a nice dark brown and a black. Um, and when you're applying liquid liner, um, I know it's not an easy thing for everybody, but you start in the middle and then do little brush strokes to the side and then go back and do the thin bit in the middle. So start in the middle, go out, and then go back. And you don't have to do a straight line. You can literally go uh, like you're doing a dot to dot drawing. Just do little strokes, little strokes, little strokes, and always have an earbud ready to correct yourself after. It's no problem. Then we've got mascaras. We've got three defining mascaras, and a defining mascara is not a volume mascara. It defines the lashes. Um, and if you have got quite thick lashes, maybe you don't need volume mascara, you go for the defining. And then the three volume mascara, obviously it makes you have a lot more substance and thickness to the eyelashes. It's a personal preference. 
um, and obviously a makeup artist can also guide you on whether to have a defining mascara or the volume mascara. My favourite product of in probably this whole range here, I won't go without it, is the Brow and Lash Gel, which is a clear gel. So I've got quite sort of um, one eyebrow that ends up facing downwards at the end of the day. So after you've done your eyebrows with your uh, pencil or a powder, however you like to do it, you gel your eyebrow into place and it stays in place. You can also put this on as a lash treatment. It is literally a treatment for the healthy hair growth of the lashes. Then you wait for a minute or two and put your mascara over. But the brow and lash gel, yeah, specifically for brows. For men, you, if you've got unruly moustache or beard, you can also use this on the, on the beard. It's like a, an organic hair gel. Well, it is an organic hair gel. Okay, and then we've got eye, eye palettes, we've got eyeshadow palettes, we've got singles here from your beautiful white opal, they're the colours of crystals, white opal, aquamarine, verdelite, golden topaz, smoky quartz, and these are all individual eyeshadows. These are my probably my favourite, those three together. They come in a little applicator like this. This is just to show you the packaging. There's nothing in here and you can't get it out. Then we've got the eyeshadow uh, trios. We've got sapphire which is the one with the blue in it. Um, we've got uh, jade which is we've got the jade green. We've got ametrine which is your purpley and your sunstone. And then this one is an eyebrow and eye pa palette, all matte colors completely. So no shimmery colors in the brow and eye and brow palette. I love this for eyebrows. And then for people that are prone, women that are prone to wrinkles, I would suggest a no shimmer for the eye shadow. You don't want to use things with a little bit of a color on the eyes. Um, and yeah, the general rule is if you've got blue eyes, you want to wear um, colors with the sort of the orange undertone, maybe like the sunstone, for example, or otherwise these uh, colors for the uh, blue eyed people. And if you've got green eyes, the general rule, remember there's no rules in makeup, but the general rule is that if you've got green eyes, you want to wear makeup with a red undertone. So green eyed people would look beautiful with the ametrine, which is the purpleys. You can also use the, the jade, which has got the green for, for everybody. Um, the sunstone is lovely for blue eyed people, but also for green, it's no problem, but generally for blue. And then um, if you've got brown eyes, you can use anything except for too much brown, that, that is the general rule. So brown eyes, you can use any color, but don't make it all brown. And blue eyes, generally the orange undertone, and green eyes, generally the, yellow, the, the, the red undertone. So you've got to picture the, the color wheel and use your contrasting color. So if you've got green eyes, the opposite on green is red. And if you've got blue eyes, the opposite color on the color wheel is orange. Uh, warmer tones. So those are the cool, red is a cold color and orange is a warm color. After you've done um, your eyeshadows, obviously then you're going to do your mascara at, at the very end. I usually do rouge right at the end but it's a personal preference. Um, the rouge um, at the moment it comes in a duo. I like to mix them together. But you can also use one color and then the other color as little highlights. So this is the highlighter, for example. Um, this is for the general cheek color. <laughs> and then you can go back with, with this and then highlight on the, on the cheekbones, for example. You can also put a little bit on the eyes up at the top here. Um, the soft apricot, dewy peach, and the sudden kissed nectarine. Um, and you can also mix them together if that is a personal preference for the rouge. Um, okay, lipsticks, we've got lip liners. And again, the colors are on the top. We've got a lovely range of, of colors there uh, from pinky pink to all the way to the other, the other side. You want a good sharpener. Then one of my favorite things is the lip liner definer, which is also the zero zero. So in the eyes, you have zero zero, 
which is the highlighter. And on the, uh, the lip liner, we've got a lip liner definer zero zero, which prevents the lipstick from bleeding into the lines. So any woman over the age of 45, 50, maybe will start with a few lines. This is an invisible pencil that needs to just be really colored in the outside of the lips to prevent the lipstick from bleeding. And so if you wear strong colors, like a beautiful wine red or a, an orangey or a pink, and you don't want it to breathe, uh, bleed into the, the lines, just cover in here. It's got um, the, a, a lot of waxes in it, so it literally prevents it from bleeding in. Then um, we have got a range of lip glosses. Um, this You can see the color of the lip glosses here from 00, zero which is the um, a completely colorless lip gloss, which gives a beautiful shine and, and glisten. And then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six lip glosses, really beautiful um, colors, completely natural ingredients, obviously. Then we've got sheer lipsticks. The sheer lipstick with this one is between a lip gloss and a lipstick. So it really gives a very, very gentle color on the lips, but very, very natural, depending on the color, obviously. Um, this one is one of my favorite. This is like a sort of a berry lip gloss and a lipstick in one. You can see the sheer lipsticks. So they are see-through lipsticks. Then we have number one to 18 normal lipsticks. Um, let's go for the number three, which is probably the best seller. And these lipsticks really do nourish and care for the lips a lot. Generally, if you're trying to match a lip liner to your lipstick, you're probably going to go number one or two lips liner with the first two. These are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, if you're putting them on your makeup stand. Number one and two lip liners go with the first two rows. Number two and three lips lip liner, three and four, uh, four and five, five and six lip liner. So that you're going with the color thing. These are the pinkies going to the roses, browns and oranges to that side. Your red wine and red colors are in the in the middle here. You've got the pinky red and then you've got the orangey red here, which obviously you can pick your pick your tone of of red lipstick according to your color preference. Just going to the brush module. Some of you might have the brush module. These are not testers for people to use. They're just to look at. <clears throat> um, and obviously, if we keep all our stock in our shelves below the makeup stand. That's a quick 101 on the Dr. Hoshka makeup.